from First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This is the National Football League. Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns taking on Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. First opened in 1999. There's a good look at First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Houston Texans. Johnson. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And the Browns set to go on offense for the first time, led by Baker Mayfield in his fourth season now from Oklahoma. And while we can quibble a little bit about statistics, to me, Baker Mayfield's coming off his best season yet. 26 touchdown passes, cut way down on his turnovers, and led the Browns to a playoff victory for the first time since 1994. This young man continues to mature as both a passer and a leader. And now Mayfield on the bootleg. Flushed out right. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Well, the pressure just couldn't get to him that time. They forced him out to his right, but he held his poise, surveyed the field, didn't find anything he liked, and then took off and picked up a nice gain. Four yards remain for second down. Mayfield. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Mayfield finding Hooper there for a Cleveland first. A nice throw there by Mayfield. A guy who really reemerged as a season and later the playoffs went on last year. What are defenses trying to do against him? Well, the first thing defenses want to do is use his emotion against him because he's such a passionate player that sometimes he comes up really hyped up and the ball might sail a little bit early. But as the game settles in, the next part is make sure you chip away at his timing, put the pressure on him so maybe his feet don't get quite set and then he's not able to be as accurate as he normally is. Oftentimes when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. Second and 11 now. Mayfield to throw it. He'll get this one underneath to Hunt. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. The ball's still a few inches shy of the marker after the three-yard run, so now a little soul-searching on fourth down. On 
down is Jamie Gillen to punt this one away. Back deep here, Andre Roberts. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. And the Texans ready to take over here on offense, and it's Deshaun Watson at the controls in his fifth season now in the NFL. Another tremendous year in 2020 where he led the NFL with 4,823 passing yards. And remember, that was in the year after DeAndre Hopkins was traded to Arizona. Also had 33 touchdown passes against only seven interceptions. A dynamic performer. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Lindsey now off the read option. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And that was a pleasing run from Philip Lindsey coming over from the Denver Broncos to join now a crowded backfield with the Houston Texans. But why is it so crowded? Because they finished 31st in the league last year in rushing, and they're trying to find anyone who can lead them and get that running game moving in Houston. They'll try the air now with Watson. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 17 on the pickup there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. I thought that Brandon Cooks took over the number one role for the Texans after DeAndre Hopkins was shipped to Arizona, and he wound up with a team leading 81 catches in 2020, his most since 2015. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that'll make it second down. Back to throw, Watson. Screen pass to Lindsey. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to give that big advantage early. On third down, here's Lindsey. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. After one. 
Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a first and ten. It's complete to Chris Conley. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. Shotgun snap and a give to Lindsey. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three and now a much tougher third down looming. Well, let's face it, that's just a helpless feeling for a running back there. He's looking up to find a hole, and all he finds is a whole lot of ticked off linebacker. They're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. Watson now to throw. And that's complete to Cooks. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. First down, Texans. Watson hooking up with Cooks. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, that little extra pace that he had on the pass. That required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. Working with second and five now. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Watson on third down. Out to the left, he's got his tight end, Akins. And the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Watson. And a quick throw here, that's complete. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. They'll contain him to just four, second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because 
He really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. Now Watson. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Jordan Akins there to make the grab. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run and he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Here comes Johnson on the return. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Mayfield looks to throw. He's got the hook up to Odell Beckham. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. First down now, but that clock rolling. Mayfield now. Swings this out for Hunt. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. I like the play design there. They occupied the defense downfield. Everyone trying to account for someone. But unfortunately, they didn't account for the running back slipping out of the backfield. And he was absolutely unnoticed and wound up getting big yards on that play. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Seven yards, the pick up there. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Mayfield with it once more. Pass incomplete. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Third and short yardage, Mayfield. Quickly into the hands of Beckham. 
Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Mayfield on first down. Going right back to Beckham here, complete. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Working out of the gun, Mayfield. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I'm also wonder why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. And again, it's Mayfield. He finds his target, Beckham. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second and 11. Here's Mayfield. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. <laughs> to throw, Mayfield. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. Four seconds, all that remain here in this first half as the kick gets away. On the return, Andre Roberts from his end zone. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We just watched a strong first half from quarterback Deshaun Watson. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Watson will bring up the Texans here, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Faking the give, now Watson. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. Second down and seven. Here's a give to Lindsey. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. a nickel set here on third down. A shotgun snap for Watson. That's complete to the Memphis man, Anthony Miller. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Shifts past him. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. From just shy of midfield, Watson. The Connelly's got it over the middle. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 32-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Watson's throw here taken in by Cooks. And down inside the 15 he goes. Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Watson to give. This is Johnson. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. After the pickup of five, here's second and five.
Now a handoff for Lindsey. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Watson. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout. An injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They're going with Lindsey. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Phillip Lindsey, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Texans take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So a big decision there to go on fourth down gets him not only the first, but gets him the touchdown as well. And Brandon, you and I know that all these coaches tell us if every play is executed the way it's designed, it goes for a touchdown. But let's be honest, they were shooting for the first down on that one, and boy, were they fortunate to take it all the way in. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A 10-play drive that time, and it was capped off by a Philip Lindsay touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Returning it, Johnson. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now first and 10 at their own 27. <laughs> He'll start things off with a handoff to Chubb. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. If these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And finding the tight end, Hooper. The reception good for seven. It's third down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 
He's up to 70 yards receiving now as that last catch gets him a first down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. run got six now second and four let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Oh a first carry now for Kareem Hunt and this won't be enough to pick up the first a gain of two third and one so they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters this is the National Football League on EA Sports The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Throwing Mayfield. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. But every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one score game. I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 41 the mic, 41 the mic. Check, 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 41. From the gun, Mayfield. Open man is Higgins. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. To throw again on second down. Mayfield. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 15-yard line. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And in his second year in Cleveland after four in Atlanta, Austin Hooper always does all he can to build some rapport with his quarterback. He did it with Baker Mayfield last year. Expects it to continue to rise here in 2021. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And they'll get to him just inside the 15, even after that strong run we witnessed. Zach Cunningham, league's leading tackler a year ago, in to make the stop. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Throwing on second and eight. Mayfield firing quickly here, and that's complete. Well, the Browns are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. 
It's a one-yard touchdown run for Nick Chubb. And the Browns have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Mayfield going to try to throw for the two. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Andre Roberts now to return it. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. you got plenty of time on the clock defensively. They have three timeouts, so do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit, and you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Three yards the gain there, second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's Watson. That's complete to the tight end, Akins. And he'll take this forward for about five as we have come upon the two-minute warning. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. At the 41-yard line. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. On second down, a run with Lindsey. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. third down and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Watson. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon.
three yards on the punt, return of four, and the Browns will take over first and ten. Now Mayfield and the Browns down 14-11, a minute 46 to go. Now they need at minimum three points out of this as they come up first and ten. Mayfield into the hands of Beckham and he almost gets this to the 30 taken down about a yard shy right off the bat it's a first down to start the drive 12 yards and here we are in the fourth quarter partner and you watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown and you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there not just for himself but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too Mayfield Finding Hunt. And the ball is knocked out, and the Texans scoop it. And his crew will take over with a fifth ball at the 35-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective, taking care of the ball is so important. I know they're going to have all kind of ball security drills in practice all next week. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Lindsey, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Lindsey now off the read option. And he's got Rome. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Down to a knee here as the Texans look to let the clock roll. Down to an egos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And I tell you, this was a fun one. Just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal. Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know, this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on.
So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Cleveland.